Hi students, I wanted to continue with some example problems for you. Um, working with the RLC circuits, these are source free and um, we're going to look at the natural response. So um, suppose we get in a, a problem that looks like this. Um, they tell us that the second order ODE describes the natural response of an RLC circuit. Okay, so they're going to give us 2d squared i dt squared plus 10 di dt plus 25i is equal to 0. So in the last example problem we did, we were actually given um, a diagram of a circuit. And in the schematic, we could see the values for r and l and c. But this time, um, they are just giving us the differential equation. So um, given this, they might ask us to find um, an, an equation for current for all time. So find i of t if i of 0 is equal to 10 amps and di dt at 0 is equal to 0. Okay, so these things here are our initial conditions, and we can use those to um, find the coefficients of our i of t equation. Okay, so um, what should we do first? How do we approach a problem like this? Well, first of all, let's recall that in standard form, the second order ODE is um, L d squared i dt squared plus r is the coefficient on the first derivative term and 1 over c is the coefficient on the regular term where and the inductance value will be the coefficient on the squared term okay so this is the standard form of the equation so we can kind of do coefficient matching so you see that whatever is in front of the i um, of the second derivative term is going to be l so here we have the l is equal to 1 whatever coefficient is front of the first derivative term is going to be r. So this is r equals 10. And then whatever coefficient is in front of the i term, the non-derivative term is going to be 1 over c. So 1 over c is equal to 25. So that means that c is equal to 1 over 25. And this is how we kind of root out the value for the inductor, the resistor, and the capacitor um, if we don't have the circuit schematic. Um, so we can read it basically from the equation that they give us. So now what do we do? Okay, we have these values. Last time, the first thing that we did was we computed um, alpha and omega naught. So we'll do the same thing here. So compute alpha and omega naught. So why do we do that first? Um, the reason why is because then we'll be able to see which case we fall into. So what type of natural response we have in this RLC circuit depends on um, how alpha and omega naught relate to each other. So if this one's smaller, we're in a case. If this one's smaller, we're in a different case. If they're equal, we're in a different case. So there's three different cases. Um, so let's find out what these values are. The formula for alpha is r over 2l. So for r values, this is going to be 10 over 2 times 1. 10 over 2, which is 5. So our alpha is 5. Omega naught is 1 over root LC. So for us, in this example, this is going to be square root of 1 times 1 over 25. So that's 1 over 1 over 5, which gives me just plain 5 is omega naught. So now that I um, see that these guys are equal to each other, um, since alpha is equal to omega, I know that this is going to be in the critically damped case is critically damped. Okay, so then um, you can look on your formula sheet. We drive the equations for um, what form our um, current equation will be if we're in the critically damped case. And um, from that we should have that the solution should be in the form I of t is equal to b1 e to the negative alpha t plus 
plus b2 e to the negative alpha t. So we have repeated roots here. And um, the reason why these are repeated is because, um, remember when we solve for s, s is negative alpha plus or minus the square root of um, alpha squared minus omega naught squared. So if these guys are equal to each other, this is going to be negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 25 minus 25, right? So that means that S1 is equal to S2 is equal to negative 5, because this is negative 5 plus 0 and negative 5 minus 0. So we have the roots are both equal to negative alpha. Okay, so then we, we kind of guess, we assume that our um, the solution to the second order differential equation is going to be in this form. And then we use our initial conditions to solve for our coefficients b1 and b2. All right, so let's do that next. Next, use initial conditions to find b1 and b2. Um, so what are our initial conditions? We have that um, 10 is equal to i at time equals 0. So that means that b1 e to the negative alpha times 0 plus b2 e to the negative alpha times 0 is going to be equal to 10. So anything raised to the 0 is just going to be 1. So this gives us b1 plus b2 is equal to 10. All right, great. So let me kind of put that on the back burner. I'm just going to have that guy sit tight for a moment while I look at the other initial condition. My second initial condition was that the derivative at time equals 0 of i is equal to 0. So if I take the derivative of this thing here, I will get negative alpha b1 e to the negative alpha t. And then here I'll get minus alpha b2 e to the negative alpha t. And then if I evaluate that at t is equal to 0, I should set that equal to 0. So I'll get negative alpha b1 e to the 0 minus alpha b2 e to the 0. So that means that 0 is equal to negative alpha b1 minus alpha b2. So this is negative alpha times b1 plus b2. Negative alpha is negative 5. So negative 5 times b1 plus b2. But we have this is equal to 0. So I know negative 5 is not equal to 0. So that means I must have that b1 plus b2 is equal to 0. Oops, there you go. So that is um, what my second initial condition gave me. Okay, so I have these two equations from my two initial conditions. So this implies that I could say this is b1 is equal to negative b2. And suppose I take this and plug it into here so I can solve for b1 and b2, and what do I get? I get that negative b2 plus b2 is equal to 10. So I get 0 is equal to 10. Is that true? No, <laughs> this is a contradiction. So if we encounter a problem like this, that means that our assumption that our solution was going to be in this form didn't work. Okay, so the second thing we try, and this is like the regular process for solving differential equations, um, since our guess for i of t didn't work, we're going to make a second guess. And the second guess usually is very similar to the first guess, but here I'll, I'll call these different coefficients. Um, C1 e to the negative alpha t plus, here's what's different, we put a t, we multiply a t by the second term, C2 e to the negative alpha t. And the reason why this is a kind of our second line of defense is because the result of this, the derivative of this is going to be different. So when we go to use our initial conditions, we shouldn't end up with a contradiction. We'll see. So um, let's try it. Let's try our initial conditions. We have that 0 
is equal to i of 0. So that's going to be e to the 0 times c1 plus 0 times c2. And this is going to be just plain c1. Sorry, this isn't 0, this is 10. So c1 is equal to 10. Great. So I got one coefficient. Now my second initial condition, this one was equal to 0. 0 was the derivative of i at time equals 0. So the derivative of this thing here is going to be negative alpha c1 e to the negative alpha t plus, now here I'm going to have to use the product rule. So I have the derivative of this times this plus this times the derivative of this. So derivative of t is just 1 times c2 e to the negative alpha t plus then I don't take the derivative of the t, but I take the derivative of this guy that's being multiplied by the t. So I have t times c2 times negative alpha e to the negative alpha t. And I want to evaluate that at t is equal to 0. All right, cool. So what should this be? 0 is equal to negative alpha c1 e to the 0 plus c2 e to the 0 plus 0 times c2 times negative alpha e to the 0. Okay, so let's simplify this. My alphas are, this is 5, right? So negative 5 times c1. Um, anything raised to the 0 is just 1. So then I still have a c2 here, and this just becomes 0 because it's multiplied by 0. Great. So if this is equal to 0, this implies that 5c1 is equal to c2. I have that c1 is 10, so 5 times 10 is equal to c2. Great, so then this should be negative alpha. That's positive. Let me check my signs here. Um, Okay, so now that I have that C2 is equal to 50, I can put that into my general equation. Then I of t is equal to 10 e to the negative alpha t. I'll just put in my 5. Negative 5t plus t times 50 e to the negative 5t. And um, this is my equation for i of t for any time t that I was asked for in the problem. So um, the, that's the general process for how to approach these. You might get um, a second order ODE of the current, and you might get one of the voltage. And either one's OK, because they'll still have the same characteristic equation. So um, I'll do another example for voltage, but if you get a second order ODE that describes the natural response for an RLC circuit, try to assume that the um, solution will be in this form. If that gives you a problem, then your next guess is to try to assume that the solution will be in this form, and hopefully your initial conditions will work out. So let me know how that goes, and good luck.